50 trained marksmen who miss one time in a thousand have their rifles trained at your chest. Ready, aim, 50 guns go off. And as the smoke clears, you're still alive. How did that happen? Would it be enough just to say, well, of course the bullets missed, otherwise I wouldn't be here asking the questions. <laughs> Hopefully that shows what's wrong. What we want to know is, how did that bullet which started over there miss me? Why are there, why are there 50 bullets behind me and none in me? See, the fact that I'm alive, alive afterwards didn't make the bullets miss me. Hey, maybe someone bribed them. Maybe they missed on purpose. Maybe they've been doing this for so long, they had to miss someone eventually, and the person they missed is always going to go, oh, how did that happen? But just saying that I'm alive afterwards isn't a cause of anything. So I think the anthropic principle, as an explanation for all of the fine-tuning, fails, but it'll be back later. Let's finish with four ways, I think, that are good explanations, if they're true. Number one, there could be other forms of life. Maybe we just need to use our imagination. We've been considering life made from chemicals on our planet. Maybe we just need to get a, you know, use our imagination. Maybe there's some weird forms of life out there. Not made out of chemicals, made out of something else, living somewhere else, doing something else. In, in other completely different universes. Remember our, our menu? What we need to do, if this, if this explanation is going to work, it's not enough that there's a couple of other forms of life scattered around. Because we'd still want to know how on earth did we manage to be alive when there's so many dead universes around, even though there's a couple of other, you know, maybe that one's you know, some other weird form of life and some other form of life. That's not enough. What we need, if this explanation is going to work, we need these other forms of life to really start painting this thing. You get it? It's very unlikely if you threw a dart at that board at random, just to close your eyes, that you'd hit that middle spot. But if you hit one of those, some other form of life, that's pretty likely. So you get what we need? In terms of this thing, we really need to start painting this thing in. Really, really start painting it up. So what's the best alternative form of life that people have dreamed up? It's, it's silicon-based life. It's the most plausible one. Life, our, life as we know it is based on carbon. The, most, the element that's most like carbon is silicon. So maybe life could be based on silicon. And we don't know. But there's two problems with this. Number one, it's inferior to carbon in every way we can measure. The, the long chains that carbon can make, silicon can make, but they're not as stable, they're not as long. If, if I breathe in oxygen, it combines with the carbon inside me and makes carbon dioxide. Carbon dioxide, carbon dioxide. Swap in silicon and you make silicon dioxide, which is sand. So instead of a nice gas that you can breathe out, in every single one of your cells, you're making sand. It doesn't make life impossible, but it's inferior. So that if that was the spot for life, for carbon-based life, the one for silicon-based life would be smaller, because we need better conditions. More than that, remember how we make these things? We do it in stars. We smash things together. So you smash things together on the way, and you make bigger and bigger things. Carbon is smaller than silicon, so you make carbon on the way to making silicon. So any universe that has the conditions to make silicon will make carbon along the way. It's very hard to think of a universe where you just have oodles and oodles of silicon but no carbon. What that means is if this is the carbon spot, the silicon one is going to overlap it. The ultimate proof of this, I think, is that the most common element on planet Earth is in fact silicon. There's plenty of it around. Do you know how much of it is used by your body? Your body which makes use of iron and magnesium? None. What that means is if we go back to our menu, we put a... You probably can't even see that. There's a tiny little red spot on the, on the side of our tiny little white spot. 
But we needed to start painting the whole thing in. And that's the most plausible other form of life that we found, that we can dream up. There are other ideas. Maybe we could replace water with ammonia. Maybe we could do this. Maybe around neutron stars, something, something, something. But you should get the idea. Nothing is going to start painting in these other universes. There's no atoms, there's no nothing. For this explanation to work, we would need life to be kind of easy. Pick any old universe, maybe carbon-based life, like us won't form, but something would. I think that's extremely unlikely. Number one. Number two, maybe there's deeper laws of nature. Maybe there's only one universe on the menu. So we think that we can change the strength of the gravity, the strength of the strong force. But maybe once, when we really understand the laws of nature, we'll understand why they couldn't be different. Now this is a very, very plausible explanation. It's what most of the scientific community is after. And so they should. Science is about finding deeper and deeper laws. But I've got a few things to say about this. Number one, in practice, it's looking uh, a little difficult. The best chance we have of producing a unified, you know, the whole thing, the law of nature, is something called string theory. In string theory, it's so complicated that we don't yet know whether it's going to give one possible law of nature or 10 to the power of 500. That's one with 500 zeros after it. It might give one law of nature, it might give the Google, Google, Google. 500 zeros. I'm not kidding. That's literally what's going on in the scientific community right now. It's a phenomenally complicated thing. So that doesn't give me a whole lot of... I'm not a string theorist, but it doesn't give me much confidence. But on a more fundamental level, these deeper laws themselves might be fine-tuned. A good example of this is... Uh, whoop, sorry, jump your head. A good example of this is something called uh, inflation. Very early in, the, early in our universe, we think that there was a process by which the universe expanded extremely quickly. What that does for you is it sorts out the amount of matter in your universe. Remember the very first thing I talked about? How much matter we had to cram into the... It'll sort that out for you. No worries. What if that needs to be fine-tuned itself? I mean, you could mess up inflation. You could do all sorts of things wrong. Will these laws be fine-tuned? I'm kind of looking into a crystal ball. What's science going to discover in the future? But that's always going to be a problem. Second, even if you have the laws of nature, we still had to remember how our universe starts off is going to make a, a bit of difference. I mean, both of these pens are subject to the same law of gravity. But if I start them off differently, one ends up over there and the other one ends up over there. If you, even if you had the laws of nature, the one law of nature you could start universe off differently and get different universes, so the initial conditions could still need fine tuning. And finally, even if it was string theory, suppose string theory is just the ultimate. Why string theory? Why not something else? Even if there are no other possibilities within string theory, there are, there are other possibilities to string theory, we would still want to know why that deeper look and why not another one? <coughs> number two, so that's number two.